live from the Lincoln Monument, Lincoln Memorial, the Star Spangled Banner. Crazy what kind of talent truck drivers got, huh? <laughs> it's amazing. We're here at the Lincoln Monument. Um, something that this place has always been a, a place that I go to whenever I'm in DC. Um, many reasons, but the main one is <clears throat> when you're down here doing something like these truck drivers are doing, this place kind of lets you reset a little bit. You sit down on these steps, you, you uh, take in the sights. You uh, think about what it is that you're doing, what your message is. Sometimes you think about if it's worth it. A lot of things have happened over the last 24 hours, specifically. White House Chief of Staff came in. Oops, hopefully I didn't mess it up. A lot of things have gone on in the last 24 hours or so. White House Chief of Staff came out, spoke to us. Um, the <clears throat> hours of service that was released, the new hours of service was announced and released. Um, a lot of good things going on that aren't official yet, but definitely have raised a lot of awareness towards the uh, broker transparency fight. Uh, I definitely say I could, I could safely say brokers are a little scared right now. Wouldn't be surprised if there's some shredders running. You know, OIDA has sent out two letters, um, not specifically um, in support of the protest, but in conjunction with the protest, they have sent out two letters um, basically asking the same thing we are, pushing for it, um, for that transparency which is a pretty big deal. You know, I wasn't sure what I thought about this down here right now um, before I got here. Wasn't sure I was going to come. And then, uh, you know, some things frustrated me, and and uh, I looked into 
who was saying what and who was where. And, and I kind of called some people out last week, said, don't listen to them unless they actually show up to an event. <laughs> well, they showed up. So I didn't really have a choice. I had to come. <laughs> but uh, sorry about the poor lighting, but it's dark out. I showed up and, and I'm here and with many others. And, and honestly, what, what was kind of the, the uh, driving force to get me here was watching these people um, <laughs> stand the ground. You know, day 15 now, tomorrow's day 15. Yeah, day 15 tomorrow. These people have been here for 15 days. Um, they've made a lot of noise. They've taken a lot of actions. And uh, we're gonna go over to Vietnam wall so he can see it. It's right there. <clears throat> um, sorry, we're kind of strolling back towards the trucks right now. But, uh, you know, a lot of things have gone on. Uh, some people disagree. Some people agree with what and how things are being done. I have to dig deep for some of the things because I'm personally tired of fluff. <laughs> and I feel like there's a lot of fluff out there. Um, and when I say fluff, I mean there's a lot of people that say, Oh, we're going to look into it. We're going to do this. We got this in support of us or we, this is coming or that's happening or blah, 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 blah. We hear that at every event, every time we've gotten nowhere. However, this time around is different in the sense that they've actually got chief of staff to walk out the white house. Now some say, oh, he was just there to blow smoke up your butt. I'm in the middle on that. Part of me thinks the same thing. Honestly, part of me thinks the same thing, but we don't know yet. He gave a timetable, you know, in a way he said, you know, we're looking into it. He, 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 he was making calls right away when he got back to his office. He gave a driver a direct email, um, that to the chief of staff, a particular person, he gave them to his direct email to contact him and converse back and forth over these issues and start working on some things for the industry. That's never happened before. It's been made very clear in, to me, the FMCSA is 100% our enemy, 100%. We've wasted a lot of time sitting in their office, a lot of time, sitting in those meetings at the FMCSA, a lot of time. We wasted. You know, the funny thing is, is all these agencies and 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 political offices and groups want to blame a different one for why you know fmcsa won't take accountability for anything <laughs> you know they say oh well that's up to the transportation committee and you need to go talk to them and you need you know then the transportation committee says well is the fmcsa aware of it <laughs> you know um and and it's been a it's been a circus over the course of four years that I've been involved in doing this stuff. And it's been, you know, I mean, gosh, it drove me into the ground at one point. I was, I was, I, I'm still, I'm still done with doing this crap. Honestly, I'm done doing this crap. Um, and I don't mean to call it crap. I just mean I suck at English. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'm done um, giving my all into this. I'm happy. I'm so proud of the people that are down here. Um, I'm happy someone's still doing it. I'm happy people are still pushing forward. I'm happy that they are way more successful than what we've ever been. Those of us that have been coming down here before, I'm stupid proud of them. Like seriously, they've done a lot. And, uh, I can't even, I can't even begin to describe the, feeling of sitting there and a chief of staff comes out and you're like, holy crap, are we actually going to get some change? Something actually going to, going to happen. We're actually making movements, but I wouldn't be me if I didn't also <laughs> lay it out, lay it out the way I see it. And so I'm going to do that a little bit here. Sorry. I'm going to, with all the fluff that we've had in the past, I'm not real excited that he came out. It's not, it doesn't, it's, it is the best thing 
that we could have asked. I mean, obviously we want the president, but he is the right-hand man of the president. And there's some of you out there that are hating on it, and I get why. Believe me, I get why. But uh, he is the right-hand man to the president. He is the president's chief of staff. And like it was explained today in a driver's meeting, and, and I agree, and I think he's right, but what was explained today was basically even if the president would have came out himself, he would have just took what he was told or documents he was handed, and he would have handed it to his chief of staff anyways. His chief of staff would have been handling it, would have been looking into it, not him himself. So the fact that the chief of staff came out, that was basically the top guy you could ever ask for to see in what we're doing down here in D.C. And he came out, he addressed these drivers, and that's because of this group that's here. No group ever, I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you've done, you've never been able to get the chief of staff of the White House to come out and address you and talk to you about your concerns and then also stand there and say that they are standing with us and that they are looking into it. It's pretty amazing. And what these folks down here in Washington have done is history in the making. Nobody's ever been able to do that. Like I said, Oida wrote two letters. Oida's never stood with us. They still don't stand with us. They still won't acknowledge that we exist down here. But it's kind of funny how all of a sudden they start pushing the broker issues as well. Now they send a, they send a pre-typed out letter to all of their members for them to send to brokers asking for the transparency, asking for the numbers that they're getting paid for it. <laughs> that happens to just right now happen. You, you get what I'm saying? They, they know what we're doing here. They see it. And they're also pushing for it. And OI has been called out by multiple people down here publicly, media, through the media even, that kind of deal. But uh, I guess maybe they kind of are in a position where they have to prove that they're doing something. I, I don't know. They're never doing anything, in my opinion, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not here to talk about them. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> I just uh, I wanted to hop on here a little bit and, and uh, one, showcase this dude right here. What's up, everyone? I don't know if you can see him. Tell him your name. Hey, I'm Jeremy Moser, owner of Moser Family Logistics Services, uh, single proprietor, uh, MC holder, one truck company. The dude just sang the national anthem in the Lincoln at the Lincoln Monument. It was amazing. <laughs> he did a fantastic job. So if you're just coming on, when the video ends, go back and watch the beginning because he literally just sang the national anthem. It was, it was awesome. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what I was saying before that part. Basically, what I'm getting at is what these guys are doing down here is a good thing. And you may not necessarily have agreed with the message right outright. I know I was one of those that wasn't really sure where I stood on that issue. Um, because I was a firm believer. Actually, I'll tell you, I was a firm believer that if you didn't like the rates, don't haul it. Leave the leave this stuff sit on the dock. Let it rot on the dock. And that's easy to say. And I'm guilty of saying that same thing. I was just saying it three days ago. <laughs> you know, but what I've learned from being down here is that it's a lot more complicated than that. You know, they... Uh, I don't want to do this crap. <laughs> Anyways, it's more complicated than that. And what, what I mean by that is, you know, there are already things out there that hold these, uh, that are supposed to be holding these brokers accountable. They're already supposed to have transparency in the numbers upon request. The drivers have the ability, Jesus, Sorry. I don't need that shit. They can look at my face in the dark. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate I'll it. it. <laughs> I'll keep it down. But... They, they already have to supply that information upon request. Now, they're finding some loopholes in it, right? That when you sign your contract to haul your freight, when you sign it, there's some fine print in there that basically is saying you're waiving your right to see what they're making off of your back. Basically, what they're making, how much of your money they're taking, right? And in a lot of cases, in many cases that we suspect through the price gouging that's been going on, is that they're making more money on your load than you're making. Well, <laughs> that, you know what I mean? So, they have opened up my eyes since being on the ground that this issue is way more complex than just letting the stuff rot, letting the stuff sit on the dock and rot. The other thing is that another loophole that they can get around, if you reach out and say, hey, I want to see... 
I want to see the rate. I want to see what their what the total number is. If you do that, they're allowed to right now. They're allowed to say, "Yeah, hey, no problem. Come into our office anytime Monday through Friday during normal business hours to see it." Yep. And then they never let you, you drive a again. truck. We drive a truck. How are we going to their office during normal business hours with our freaking semi that could be in Connecticut and we're in California to see what they're making on it? It's horse. It's BS. And they know it. And that's their way around it. So, yes, their message that I wasn't 100% behind at first, I do now completely agree with. We need more transparency in the industry. We need to close some loopholes. And there needs to be some enforcement on the rules and regulations that are already out there that hold these brokers accountable. I'm not for regulation at all, but when people are stealing money from others, I have a problem with that. And in my opinion, that's what's happening. Brokers are stealing money out of the driver's pockets. They're taking food off of your family's dinner plate. They're they're forcing you out of business. And they, I mean, what are they gonna do when when drivers can't drive anymore, when they all go bankrupt and their trucks get repo, how the brokers making money then? Do they even care? Or are they just so greedy trying to suck as much out of it right now as they can? I don't know. I'm probably just rambling at this point. But I agree with why they're down there, why they're down here. I am extremely uh, humbled by what I see. Uh, I've never seen this many trucks. At one of these events, I've never seen the response that we've gotten. I've never seen any of that stuff happen. So, um, you know, <laughs> pretty amazing. Good stuff. I don't know. D.C. is a special place. I hate it and I love it here. I love it because I believe in what our government is supposed to be and what it stands for, and the people that have sacrificed their lives to maintain what we have, who have given their all, even to the people that haven't necessarily given it all, but they've signed on the dotted line and served. You don't have what we have without that. And in this country, what these drivers are doing, they are protected by the Constitution to do what they are doing. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. But you need to respect it. Bottom line. And those of you that are on the fence about whether or not to come here, Get your ass I'm telling you, come down here. It's I've never seen anything like it. And like I said, I've been doing this for four years. <laughs> and I ain't never seen anything like it. So get down here and, and uh, sorry, I just got a phone call. Come down here and take part of it because it's uh, it's, it's quite amazing to see. We're we're like still pretty far from the. Uh, Dude, we're down by freaking night. From the center, street. we're far from the center. I was like the last truck in the line, just yesterday, and there's already trucks built up behind me. Like they keep coming in. We need more though. <laughs> we need more, and we have plenty of parking. <laughs> Hundred thousand strong. So come in if you're able to. So if you're on the fence about it, I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this before in these numbers. Um, the message is pretty clear now. I know there was a couple different things out there, and I hate that crap, but they're, they've, they've got one solid one solid message now, and that is, that is simply transparency on the transactions that take place in order for you to get a load. You know, I don't want to dive too much into it because I want to get off this thing, but I'll say this. As somebody that may not drive truck, to kind of put it in perspective for you, when it when it appeases these mega fleets, the FMCSA, whatever, they change the story of what's going on, right? So not that long ago, we were told that there's a driver shortage. Hmm. Now we're being told that there's a surplus of drivers. Mm -hmm. The freight rates were dropping before even COVID-19 stuff. They, they, they were already <laughs> they were already dropping. So you can't say that they plummeted because of COVID-19. I Sure, I'll agree that maybe it has a little bit, that, is, that has happened a little bit. 
but they were already plummeting prior to that, prior to you saying that there's a surplus of trucks because of COVID-19 and some of the specialty stuff are now into the market as well. So we have more trucks than we have freight. That's a total lie. That is a total lie. When they're saying that there's a shortage of drivers in the country, what that is is because these mega fleets go out and buy, you know, dozen trucks, we'll just say. We're just going to throw hypotheticals. Basically give you, they do do this. I just don't, I'm not all the keen on the numbers. They go buy a bunch of trucks. They plate them. They insure them. Well, most of them are self-insured too, which is a total another issue. I'm not going down that road. But either way, they plate them. They throw their numbers on them. Raises the, the mega carrier safety score because we all know that they're the worst ones on the road. They have the most accidents. They have the worst drivers in most cases. And not at the driver's fault. That's the training. Because they also have their own training programs, and many of them are even able to now issue the CDL themselves. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great job there, FMCSA. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so what they do, the what they do is they basically get these trucks, they plate them and all that, and the trucks sit empty. Raises their safety score because they don't have drivers in them, but then they also use that to their advantage and say, look at all these empty trucks. We got a driver shortage. We got a driver shortage. Look at all my empty trucks. If there was really a driver shortage. Why are you buying more trucks? <laughs> Come on, man. It's a game. It's a racket. It's what they're doing to manipulate things. <laughs> Another example of how they play this game and say what they want to say to fit the situation. Prior to the LD mandate, I'm not trying to go down that road. God, I got to get off this damn thing. <sighs> Prior to the LD mandate, they said that the LD was going to save 26 lives. 26 lives. The LD is going to save 26 lives a year. Nobody could tell you how they did the study, where they got the number from. Where did this magical 26 number come from? Made no sense. None. So now the ELD has been in play for a little bit here, and the fatality rates have drastically increased. 30-something percent. So now what they do is they play this game, and they say, they say, Oh, well, you know, it's going to be a few years before we get the actual numbers and the, and, and the true statistics. You don't have to wait a few years when you're a driver. Cars are probably seeing it. Those of you that don't drive a truck could probably see it. I go into a construction zone, and I got CR England or some other truck company, even fly-by-night companies that are on these ELDs, are doing 65 in a construction zone that's 45. They're blowing my doors off. And they're in the right-hand lane when it's left-hand lane for trucks only. So <laughs> the whole thing is a big gamut. It's, it's a big racket. I don't even want to do this crap. But bottom line, let's get back on track here. Come down to D.C. I'm happy I'm here. I don't, I don't know when I'm leaving. I don't know. I don't want to leave, but I want to leave only because I don't want to do this stuff anymore but i will speak up when i feel i need to speak up and today i feel like i needed to speak up these guys are doing a fantastic job down here i i see a lot of talk of them saying that the the chief of staff coming out was nothing but fluff but you may be right you may be right but we'll see the good news is good or bad how you want to say it I'll say good news. The good news is these drivers that are down here right now are so dedicated. They refuse to move their trucks until they, until there's action taken. They're not leaving. I had one guy says, well, it's either I sit at home for six, seven, eight weeks, or I come here and sit for six, seven, eight weeks. It's a good point. Why sit at home when you sit here? You're not making money sitting at home. You're not making money sitting here. Might as well sit here, show your support, and stand up for your industry. So, I don't know. That's it for me. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. But uh, if you're curious what's going on down here, come down here. A lot of positive things, a lot of good people, a lot of heart, and a lot of people that have never done this before are down here. There's people that have came down here that didn't know a single person when they came down here, and now they've met several of them. If they're hanging out with people, they've got friends that they'll probably talk to for a very long time. Share the video, whatever, if you need to. I don't care. But spread it out. If you're thinking about coming, come down here. There's no sign of them leaving. So even if that means you can't be here for another week, 
still head here, even if it means you won't be here for another week. Head this way. That's all I got to say about that. Well said. Like the end of Forrest Gump, that's me right now on the bench. After I told the whole life story, well, that's all I got to say about that. So for what I'm hoping is the final time of doing a Facebook Live about industry crap, I'm out. Be safe, everybody. Love you all. Like I said, come down here if you can. Bye.